are allowed to think big and dream big. How to generate different systems. Systems that provide stability and are nested within the harmony of nature. I'm excited to explore with you the intriguing bandwidth of information our researchers and friends have surfaced. Let's dive into our next topic to find out how we can actively shape a future worth pursuing and living for. Well, my name is Yasser Harafataki and I want to talk about topentification as a problematic situation in Ghana, a developing country in West Africa. In addition, how opentification has affected the natural environment, social life, and economic activities in urban areas of Accra. I will further elaborate the policies and strategies the government of Ghana took to hand opentification and to achieve sustainable development goal 6, that is to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. In addition, to go three, which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Ghana, a developing country in West Africa, has been making efforts to address the issue of opentification and improve sanitation conditions in the country. Opentification refers to the practice of people openly disposing of human waste in fields, bushes, bodies of water, or other open species instead of using proper toilets or sanitation facilities. In 2012, the government of Ghana launched the Community-Led Total Sanitation Program, which aimed to eliminate opentification and improve sanitation practices. The program focused on raising awareness, changing attitudes and behaviors, and encouraging communities to take ownership of their sanitation needs. Under the community-led total sanitation approach, communities were encouraged to collectively decide to become open defecation free. This involved community members pledging to hand open defecation and constructing their own toilets or improving existing ones. The government provided technical support, training, and monitoring to assist communities in achieving open defecation free status. However, there is a dialogue with Imam Repaditete, a local government staff of Accra Metropolitan Assembly, to discuss about the state of opentification and how Accra Metropolitan Assembly is working towards it. I further ask this question to how is the government supporting these initiatives? That according to Imam Repaditete, a local staff of Accra Metropolitan Assembly, the government has introduced a sanitation and water for all policy, which aimed to provide equitable access to improved sanitation and save water for all Ghanaians. The sanitation and water for all policy focuses on strengthening the institutional framework, improving monitoring and evaluation systems, and increase and increase investment in sanitation infrastructure and services. Additionally, the government has imposed penalties and fines for individuals and communities found practicing opentification. Then, Mr. Emmanuel, how has opentification affected the socio-ecological system? According to Mr. Emmanuel, opentification has affected the physical environment, social and economic activities. Opentification results in the direct contamination of water bodies such as rivers, streams, and lakes. Human waste carries harmful pathogens, bacteria, and viruses that can enter the water supply, leading to the spread of waterborne diseases. Then, according to Emmanuel, the, the contamination not only affects aquatic ecosystems, but also poses a serious risk to public health, when people, are, people use polluted water for drinking, cooking, or washing. According to Emmanuel also, the fecal matter left behind in opentification areas can contaminate the soil. The waste contains nutrients, heavy metal, and pathogens that can negatively impact soil quality and agricultural productivity. Also, he also talks about the, the fertility of the soil, making it less suitable for cultivation, which can have adverse effects on local food production and livelihood. 
according to Mr. Emmanuel, opidification also contributes to hair pollution as waste decomposes and releases foul odors and human gases, including methane and ammonia. These emissions can have negative effects on hair quality, contributing to respiratory problems and overall environmental degradation. The practice of opidification can result in the destruction of natural habitats. As people use open, open space for their sanitary needs, it leads to the degradation of ecosystems such as forests, wetlands, and grasslands. The loss of this habitat destroys the balance of local flora and fauna, impacting biodiversity and ecological stability. Also, Mr. Iman elaborates on opidification as unsightly and unhygienic environment. The they often become breeding grounds for flies, pets, and rodents, which can spread disease and further degrade the overall aesthetics of the city. According to, according to Mr. Himanwell, the, the lack of proper sanitation facilities leads to the contamination of water sources, food, and the environment with fecal matter. This contamination spreads diseases such as diarrhea, cholera, typhoid, and other waterborne illness affecting the overall health and well being of the population. Also, he went on to talk about the human, it undermines human dignity and privacy, particularly for women and girls. The absence of private and safe sanitation facilities expose individuals to embarrassment, harassment, and sexual assault where they need to be relieve themselves in public spaces. Women and girls in particular face challenges in maintaining their personal hygiene and face increased vulnerability to gender-based violence. Also, according to Mr. Emmanuel, the absence of adequate sanitation facilities, especially in schools and workplaces, hampers education and productivity. Lack of proper sanitation affects school attendance, particularly for girls who may miss school during menstru menstruation due to inadequate facilities. Poor sanitation also leads to reduced productivity in workplaces, such as employees may fall ill more frequently, resulting in absenteeism and decreased outputs. Mr. Himanwell went further to talk about opidification that tarnishes the image of Accra and negatively impacts tourism and foreign investment. Visitors and investors are unlikely to be attracted to a city with poor sanitation and hygiene practices. The negative perception can discourage potential tourists and investors from visiting or establishing businesses which can hinder economic growth and development. I further went ahead to ask Mr. Himanwell how would the system be changed? And according to Mr. Emmanuel, the government of Ghana has introduced policies to end opinification. According to Mr. Emmanuel, local authorities, such as district assemblies, have the responsibility to enforce these laws and regulations introduced by the government. He further went ahead to give a specific example to a region state in Accra such as Accra Metropolitan Assembly, which has initiated a household toilet project with the aim of improving sanitation and access to proper sanitation facilities within the city of Accra, Ghana. The project focuses on providing households with individual toilet facilities to promote hygiene, prevent the spread of diseases, and enhance the overall quality of life of residents. The Accra Metropolitan Assembly recognized the need to address the sanitation challenges faced by many households in Accra, where inadequate toilet facilities are hoping, are hoping and were prevalent in some areas. The household toilet project was implemented to tackle these issues and create a better living environment for residents. A further went ahead to ask Mr. Emmanuel. What are some of the strategies used by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly during the implementation of the project? Then, according to Mr. Emmanuel, the project aimed to provide each household with its own private toilet facility, ensuring privacy and convenience for the residents. This approach aimed to eliminate the need for open defecation and promote proper hygiene practices. Ifeda talks about a collaboration with various stakeholders by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, including government agencies, 
non-government organization in private sector's partners to construct and install the household toilets. These toilets were built using appropriate sanitation technologies and materials to ensure durability and functionality. Also, the project focused on identifying suitable locations within the communities where the toilets could be easily accessed by residents. Also, the program is to educate residents about the importance of proper sanitation, personal hygiene, and the benefit, benefits of using household toilets. And he also talked about the maintenance establishment, which the Accra Metropolitan Assembly established mechanism for regular maintenance and repairs. Training programs were conducted to equip community members with the necessary skills to handle minor repairs and maintenance tasks. In addition, I asked Mr. Imanre what is the current situation of open defecation in Accra. And according to Mr. Imanre, there has been some progress in reducing open defecation rates in Accra. But it is essential to recognize that long standing behavioral practices and cultural factors might still pose challenge to completely eradicating open defecation. Efforts to combat open defecation require ongoing commitment investment and collaboration between the government, communities, and organizations to achieve lasting improvement in sanitation conditions. And in conclusion, I went ahead to ask Mr. Emmanuel, is there any future challenges about the strategies? According to Mr. Emmanuel, it is important to know that opinification is a complex issue, deeply rooted in cultural, social, and economic factors. Therefore, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly approach encompassed a range of policies and strategies to address the problem comprehensively.